I have volume. Okay. I cannot hear it. I apologize. <laughs> this morning, it is my great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Reverend Bronte Colbert. She was ordained by Bishop Dr. Barbara King at Hillside International Truth Center in 2001 and by Unity Worldwide Ministries in 2022. She is a founding member and recent chair of the Interfaith Clergy Partnership of Greater Athens, recently retired as senior minister of Unity Athens, where she served since 2004. She is now focusing on guest speaking, diversity, and other workshops, and her writing. She's a poet, a fiction and nonfiction author, and if you read any of Unity's printed booklet, booklets, you will see her name in there quite frequently. She loves mountains, beaches, hiking, and the joy of being alive. Let us welcome today the Reverend Bronte Colbert. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Reverend Danny. I'm so delighted to be here. It's not my first time here, but it's my first time speaking here. I was here for a New Thought concert or a Unity concert we had back maybe 10, 12 years ago. And then for some kind of Halloween thing where Unity Athens was joining up with Unity here in Gainesville to do different things. So delighted to be here, delighted to talk about our spiritual toolboxes today. And I brought one of my toolboxes along. I have this uh, imaginary toolbox that's really elegant and it's got all these layers in it and all these little nooks and crannies and it lights up on its own just when you whisper something sacred to it like, hi, and that's just in my imagination, and I really didn't want to buy something with all that extra plastic these days. So this box just kind of popped up in one of my closets, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. I would like to be sure that everyone has received one of these yellow slips. So if you haven't, there's some extra ones on the chairs or up here where my baggage sits. <laughs> I don't carry my baggage around. I put it on a chair. Um, so, imagine the spiritual tools that are resonating with you already. I know we all have so many from being in this spiritual process over so many years, or perhaps you're kind of new to the path of unity or new thought or spiritual practices, but I believe that in our lives we find things that inspire us, that comfort us, that help us when we're going through that angsty stuff, the stuff that, you know, is really kind of hard to deal with, or the things that we want to use when we're celebrating. Is there a special? It could be. I'm going to give you some examples. It could be a mantra. It could be a mudra. It could be a special book. It could be an affirmation. It could be a Bible verse or another sacred text. It could be something that you say in your prayer that really carries you deeper. It could be a recording. We were listening, my friend BJ, who is also from Athens, Georgia, and I were listening to some Abraham Hicks stuff on the way up. It can be something like that. It could be a, a friend that you see in your toolbox, <laughs> a little friend that you've known all your life that says, hey, you can change your thinking about that. You don't need to go there. Or, hey, you're doing a really get great job, self. You have all you need to move forward in the direction of your dreams. Anyone want to briefly, in a couple of words, suggest what they use in their spiritual toolbox? Okay. Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. So you can go to that, you know. Anyone else have something they want to mention? Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Anyone else? We'll do one more. Yes. Oh, yes, it's so wonderful. 
It's something you might want to share for a bit after the service as you talk to each other about what may have come up to you for you today as you think about your spiritual tools and how we might use them better. I know I've got so many that sometimes I don't even know which one to pick. And then it seems like sometimes I don't have any. You know, I'm like, how can I deal with this? But I go and look on one of my walls. There'll be some framed quote or on my bathroom mirror I've got a Louise Hay quote or a special unity card one of their prayer cards or just something like you are wonderful God's got this or God is wonderful you've got this (laughs) or however else you want to change it around right (laughs) so consider making a toolbox out of physical things or imagining one. They might be easier to carry around and light up if you do that. See it as magical and not something somewhere out there, but something that you can actually hold, whether in your mind or in your hands. You might only open it when you're praying or when you're lotusing in meditation on the floor. What I'm thinking and what I'm seeing these days is that for me, and maybe for you too, that it's really important to get back to the basics of really what new thought, unity, these spiritual teachings are about. And for me, it comes down to several things, but especially what I'm thinking about and the words that are coming out of my mouth, whether in conversation or to myself, are so important and when we change our words we change our thinking I believe our lives change it doesn't always fix any illness or create money flowing in immediately but it changes to me our consciousness of how to allow all that to come to us or how to move through the things that seem difficult So here's my toolbox for today. And sometimes we have practical things in it. Sit. Mirror. You do mirror work with Louise Hay. I just saw the other day that it's her six six years since she transitioned out of her beautiful body into the complete spiritual essence that she is indeed. And when we look in a mirror, right? We can bless ourselves. We can tell ourselves, hey, you got this, or you're wonderful, or you can get through this no matter what, or what you are is a magnificent child of the Most High. You might have a notepad in there. You might have a candle. This one floats on water. You know, you can get these at Michael's and other thrift stores, and when things seem tough, Sometimes I I need the feeling I can float on water. So I'll put this in a little dish and light it. Then there's a screwdriver. (laughs) I have no idea why this is in here, but it should be in everybody's toolbox, right? Maybe the other kind. And when you do things like that, your toolbox just kind of lights up. Ah, there's a Unity booklet in here. to give this to Don because he's so wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And here's another one, which um, if I throw this, it'll probably first person up to get it gets it. Okay. What's your name? Uh, any coffee in there? No. Nah. <laughs> and things like whoops. Daily word. Prayer cards. Your toolbox might be metal, might be wooden, might be cardboard or plastic, could be ethereal, could be totally in your mind. It might hold things like a feather, a paintbrush, a sketch pad, a recipe for apple pie, four-leaf clover. I found a feather from a red-tailed hawk in my front yard the other day. I thought it was an owl, and I wasn't disappointed to find out it was a red-tailed hawk instead. But it was so beautiful. It was just like, oh, you know, this just didn't happen. This is a gift from spirit. I'm going to go look up red-tailed hawk 
and figure out exactly what that means to me, and especially the idea of being a messenger. It might hold a photo of someone you love. Or these things might be up in your meditation area. It could hold a postcard that you just found somewhere and really love or that someone sent to you or that you would like to send to someone. Could it be time to polish up our core beliefs so we get back to the thought that the core is what we can strengthen? They talk about bodybuilding to get to the core. I'd rather do it with my belief system. Thank you very much. What do, how do we do that? Can you make a time every day, and you may be doing this already in your meditation and prayer practice, but to think about your toolbox, think about your gifts, think about the times in your life when you moved through something and how good it felt. Think about the times in your life when you got over something like a cold or a flu or something more serious. Think about the times in your life you had a healing with another person that you thought you just really didn't want to be around, but you figured out a way to get together and to be together, whether in physical or mental or even after they've passed on, and to have that healing experience that we are all pure light and love. And as we watch our words, I was thinking, especially about Louise Hay, there's a story that Esther Hicks tells through Abraham. And this must have been quite a few years ago because Jerry, Esther's husband, was still in the body. And they were dealing um, and getting published by Louise Hay's publishing company, Hay House. And they went to visit Louise. And Louise had this beautiful, brand new Mercedes. It was the fanciest car, Esther said, that she had ever been in. They were even laughing about, do you have any gray poupon in the, in <laughs> the glove box? And they went into a parking garage because they were going to go to lunch or meet in a building or something. And um, Louise is driving, which is just so wonderful and inhuman when you've got all that money and a Mercedes that you don't have a chauffeur to. She's driving into this parking garage, and there were a lot of cars in there. And Esther said to Louise, aren't you worried about getting your car scratched or dented in a parking lot like this? And Louise, she just got her center on as always, and she said to Esther, I expect everybody to treat this car with as much love as I do. And you see how that totally wiped out fear or worry or, oh, my God, this hasn't happened, these worst-case scenarios that we all seem to be good playing with at different times. I have a really good imagination, and I can really use it in the wrong way when I want to do worst-case scenario day. Oh, and what if this happens, and what if that happens, and, oh, I saw this on the news, and they said that could happen, and then I remember to turn off the news, and gosh... Nothing of that happened. But sometimes we can change that worst case scenario into best case scenarios. Just again, centering. I have a little acronym that I use that helps me. And it doesn't really spell out a bigger word or anything, but it's CBA, which I can remember because it's backwards of ABC. But I pause, so I added a P at the beginning of it. And then for C, I center. Consciousness, centering. Right? Want to do that for a minute? Just center. Consciously center, like we do in meditation and these beautiful songs. A little earpiece, you're going to stay on, you know that? Thank you. Um, so we center. And then B, we breathe. Now we always breathe, right? 
uh, Reverend Ellen Devonport, who's the editor up at Unity Booklets, said to the writers, you know, when we do a piece on meditation, all of you don't need to write the first word as breathe, but breathe. <laughs> we center and we breathe. And then in A, we align. We align with spirit. We align with that knowingness. And by that pausing, no matter what is going on, that's huge in our toolboxes. No matter what is going on, it reminds us what we are. We have this incredible journey here on planet Earth to interact with others, to know our godness, to know that we make a difference, that our lives matter to know that we make a difference every single day just by being here and pausing and being in consciousness and breathing and in alignment. Little yellow slip. Emily Cady, and she's not often described this way, is actually one of the first female medical doctors in the United States. She was born in 1841, no, 1848. Remember that, because I was born in 1948. And she made her transition in 1941. But back when she was young, she just had high aspirations to do things, and she was very smart, and she decided to be a teacher for a year. And then she decided to go to a homeopathic medical doctor school in New York. And many of you have read her books, Lessons in Truth, and her others. And she was one of the first writers for the original Unity magazine for the Fillmores. She's one of my cores, one of my core principles when I need to stay in alignment or I just want to play around in my toolbox. She always, I believe, always stayed in alignment. But wait, there was that one time when she decided that if she was really doing God's work and she healed people from all kinds of things by sitting with them, sometimes prescribing things. But one time, God and she were connecting and she decided, well, if I'm really doing this in spirit... I shouldn't ask for money. I should just be doing it freely. And we like to see that, you know, yes, and then that worked. Well, it didn't. <laughs> and she started realizing she was having a money deficit and couldn't pay for all her things. And she was spending, she, is, she was in true spiritual angst over this. Why isn't this working? Spirit told me it would work. Why isn't, have you done that? Why are my tools not working? Why isn't this coming to me? And she kept getting the Bible verses from Genesis in her mind over and over again. And God said, this is, and this will be. In those early creation stories, God spoke. She said, oh, I haven't been speaking these truths. So she started speaking the truth about money and abundance. And within a short amount of time, a wealthy benefactor came and gave her all the funding she would need to continue her work without asking people for money. In her book, Lessons in Truth, in the fourth chapter, when I was in ministerial school back at wonderful Hillside International Truth Center in Atlanta, the teacher I had for that class made us memorize the affirmations in chapter four, which I believe was originally chapter five in the original book, but we don't need to go there, so why did you Bronte? I don't know. <laughs> but the affirmation that stayed, I'm so glad she made me memorize them along with everyone else in the class because the one that stayed with me the most is the one you have on this yellow piece of paper. And I think it's a great tool to use when we're worried about anything, 
when we forget who we are, because we can change the pronouns in it. Pronouns are so important. We can say, I am spirit, as it starts out. If we're concerned about someone, someone far away, someone that we're not speaking with, someone that's going through something, we can hold them in this quiet. We don't need to say it to them. We don't need to text it to them. We don't need to pick up the phone and call them and say it. We can say, you are spirit, and go through it. When the news does catch up with us, and what I love about the news, no matter how awful seeming things are, is exactly what Danny was praying with this morning. It's a vehicle for prayer. We can hold so many people in prayer. So when we're doing for the world or for something that's happened in the news, we can go, we. We can include our beautiful planet in that. So if you'd like and if you're able and comfortable doing it, we can do this three times. And then after that, we'll go into meditation. So the first time we'll use I am spirit. The second time we'll use you are spirit. And the third time we are spirit. You can do it quietly if you want. You can hold someone especially in mind or just mention a name if you want. Okay? So kind of center, center, breathe, align. I am spirit, perfect, holy, harmonious. Nothing can hurt me or make me sick or afraid, for spirit is God, and God cannot be sick or hurt or afraid. I manifest my real self through this body now. Take a breath and feel that. Now for you, and it can be multiple use. You may have a number of people that you're just saying this for. Don't be surprised if they contact you later today in person or from the others or via text and you feel them in some sort of way. You are spirit, perfect, holy, harmonious. Nothing can hurt you or make me sick or afraid. afraid. For, For spirit, spirit is God, God and, and God, God cannot be sick or hurt or afraid. You manifest your real self through your body now. Hold that. And then the we, the world, the family, human life, our planet, our animal life, our balance, everyone going through anything. You are spirit, perfect, holy, harmonious. Nothing can hurt you or make you stuck or afraid. For spirit is God, and God cannot be sick or hurt or afraid. We, we manifest, manifest our real, real selves through, through this body, body now. Thank you. That's why I read it, because it's a little... I keep going back to the I almost every time. So we're going to go into meditation in a moment. These are a few of my favorite quotes that I put in my toolbox from Florence Scovel Shin, starting... Today is the day of my amazing good fortune. Let's say that. Today is the day of my amazing good fortune. I'm not sure who this is from, but it sounds like Louise Hay. I am a money magnet. I am a money magnet. Might be Flossie Shun, too. Um, and those are the two. And let's... Remember this, this week or the weeks ahead, to consider setting up a physical or ethereal toolbox and always try to have at least one tool on you. You know, it might be a crystal in your pocket, it might be a meditation slip in your car, it might be a little reminder you have in the car that 
before you turn on the ignition, when you put that key in, to say a prayer. Or when you open your front door, say a prayer. Second, try for a day or part of one to not talk about things you don't want and focus on what you do want. Catch yourself or ask someone to remind you and meditate even for a few moments. Like we will do now, we'll go into meditation. If you're watching from home, we're out in the yard in a hammock, relax. Might wanna light a candle if you're at home. Might want to have your feet on the floor, feeling that energy, those ions and electrons coming up from Mother Earth, parent Earth, planet Earth. Relaxing into the moment, knowing the wonderfulness of who you are, who you always have been, who you always will be, the way you are influencing others to see their spirituality, the way you influence yourself to live with it and through it and in it. And during this meditation, we will have two moments or so of deep quiet in which you may hear nudges from spirit or extra connection, or it may allow that to come even more easily later in the day. As we breathe, we let go. We breathe, we let go. We know our wholeness, we know our oneness. We're so grateful for all that we have. We're so blessed, so blessed. We are alive in this moment, in this day, and that is wonderful. into the quiet and if thoughts come in it's okay we can brush them aside we can acknowledge them we can ask them to come back later feeling our groundedness blessing our bodies so grateful deep into the silence What a wonderful, sacred space we create, we allow, we center into when we meditate. So much gratitude that we know it and can access meditation at almost any time. Out walking in nature, sitting by a window, a 
as we wake, as we sleep. When we're ready, we can open our outer eyes. Perhaps put your hands on your heart or give yourself a hug. I think that's a core unity belief, hugging. Hell. 